What are you doing, old man? I was just... Hang in there, Philly. Hang in there. I had that creep Baxter in my sights, and I let him go. I blew it. Believe me, mister. Working with me does have its upside. Who cares about his chicks? Fast cars and guns. Everybody free! <laughs> I didn't think a little champagne would be harmful to my health. Not unless you drink it by the magnet. He's probably looking for a date. Wait <laughs> yeah. for our wedding, remember? Do I remember? Oh. Wow, look at the great spread in there. Yeah, well, Barrington's in charge of the catering. Well, I better check on what he's catering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's this? This looks great. Mm, I love it. Do you have to? Mm. Get here. It's Singapore chicken, and I'm not through with it yet. Mm. Where's Hammer? Him and Philly Brock are doing a little last-minute shopping. Philly Brock? What, the Tiffany of the Five and Dime? That's the guy. What are they up to? Don't tell me. I may be called as a witness. Ten years had passed since I was the best man at Pat Chambers' wedding. I guess that gave me the honor of finding an anniversary gift for his wife, Linda, with my pal, Philly Brock. Philly had a knack for getting anything from anybody. The dirtiest word in his vocabulary was retail. $600? Hey, come on, you're kidding. For $600, I could get two stones like this. What do you want, Philly? You want me to give you my store? OK. For you, five fifty. dollars mm -mm. It's a present for the wife of a police captain. Philly, come on. Pat said we could go a little bit higher. I know, but I know it's worth. Talk to him, Mr. Hammer. Philly, the anniversary is today. Come on, the party has started. Everybody's waiting. Will you make a deal? OK. OK. Look, it's a little flawed, but I'll tell you what I'll do. 400, if, if you throw in the mountain. You're robbing me, Philly, you know that? Don't make a sound, Dad. We're here to make a pickup. What? I said you don't sound. Hang in there, Philly. Hang in there. 
dying in there. Somebody call an ambulance! This is delicious. I had no idea Larry was such a former cook. Well, don't try his key. She'll own you. <laughs> What is it? Mike's been shot. Philly, too. No. I'll call you. There he is. Is it true that they got away with four million in diamonds? Excuse us, please. Excuse us. Please, let the lady through. How Make does it work, the lady, please. Killers are private. I think the same treatment as cop killers. First of all, Kathy, I don't understand why that question is being raised. The second of all, Mr. Hammer is not dead. Wounded, but very much alive. There'll be no further statements until he's out of surgery. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Ow! I thought nurses were angels of mercy. Where's the mercy? Down the hall in intensive care. Behave yourself now. Mike. Mike, are you all right? Yeah. What? Hammer, they had you listed critical. I thought you'd still be in surgery. I'm all right. Philly Brock, someone who's fighting for his life. We got one name right. Connie Baxter, he was the shooter. Poor Philly. Is he going to make it? I think so. We almost lost him in the ambulance, but I think he's going to be OK. What about Baxter? Graduate of Dannemora, on parole. Conrad Baxter, two brothers, Sam and Barney. Believe me, heisting jewelry is not what they normally do. Listen, it's not your concern because you're going to be out of commission for a while. Yeah, Just don't count on it. And I won't need this. Mike, are you sure? Yep. Hey, what are you doing? You're booked for three days' bed rest. Yeah, I'm checking out of this hotel. The room surface is lousy. What do you mean you're checking out? You can't just walk out of here. I'm in no condition to jog. Listen, would you mind sticking around for a while? I think Philly'd like to see a friendly face when he wakes up. Sure, Mike. I'll be here. Hey, look. Philly is tough. He's going to make it. Be all right. I heard myself saying words of comfort, but who was I trying to kid? Tragedy is never all right. There was nothing I could do about Philly, but there was plenty I could do about Conrad Baxter, the man who shot him. So I doubled back to the scene of the crime. It's a miracle more people weren't hurt. How'd they bust through your security so easily? Beats me. System's brand new. United Federal. Supposed to be secure. What'd they get? Inventory will take a while. About four million. They took every major stone. How's Philly? Not so good. He's a good man, Philly. Somehow I feel responsible. Yeah. So do I. Thanks. I headed for home territory. Little did I know it had been invaded. Three creeps. Yeah, the name's Baxter. Connie, Sam, and Bernie. Barney. Yeah, Barney. Look, if I were a sleaze, which I am not, and I just shot someone, which I didn't, your flop house would be the very first place I'd head for. Yeah, three creeps. Hey, Mike. Connie, hey, Johnny. Barney. Hope you didn't have too much trouble with the lock. Nah, it was easy. We all saw that stuff about Philly on television. Figured you'd use some help. Mike, how's he doing? Not too good. So what do you got? Nothing you can put a tag on. Baxter tries to move those stones in town. It's going to make a lot of noise. I got the word out on the streets. You trolling for diamonds? <laughs> I can't afford diamonds. I'm fronting for the fence. Yeah, and all the big diamond fences are here. So he'll come here and try and unload his stuff. None of the people I know touch him or the stones with a tire iron. Right, so that leaves him with no place to stay and no friends. Four million bucks will buy you a lot of friends. That's retail. Baxter to be lucky if he gets 10%. Diamonds get a big markup. Yeah? Well, I'll give Baxter his markup. Hey, Mikey. Be careful. This guy's crazy. All he cares about is chicks, fast cars, and guns. And he used them all bad. He must have a tough time getting insurance. Somebody had made the bad mistake of letting Conrad Baxter out of jail. If he had any redeeming qualities, you couldn't prove it by me. I thought if I checked with the parole board, I might get a leg up on him. I'd gone to the right place. Excuse me. Yes? 
Lizetta Warren, Baxter's parole officer. Let me guess. Another detective? Well, I guess you could say that. Well, I've sent everything over to division. I'd like his last address, if you don't mind. Here you are, Detective. Camera. My camera. Thanks. Wait a minute. According to this, he hasn't reported for three weeks. Conrad called. He said he'd found work. Yeah, he found work, all right. He put a friend of mine in the hospital. We're not babysitters. I admit follow-up is sometimes slow, but we have to go with the information we're given. You take the word of a scumball like Baxter? That's what we deal with. They send the saints down the hall. In case you didn't read the sign on the door, we are in the business of rehabilitation. Rehabilitation? Well, you're doing a great job. You went all the way from armed robbery to attempted murder. I couldn't know that, could I? No, I guess not. Try my caseload sometime. It'll break your back. Baxter's just one. I make judgment calls on 15 just like him every day. So I missed one. Of course, your cops never do. Did I say I was a cop? You see, you just missed another one. The lady just didn't understand. You don't rehabilitate guys like Conrad Baxter. You ventilate them. Until then, people like Philly keep paying. Baxter had blasted my firing hand, but that didn't matter. I'd get him even if I had to pull the trigger with my teeth. I headed for the Baxter brothers' place in the Bowery, knowing there wasn't much chance I'd have left a forwarding address. But most rats leave their nest dirty. All I needed was the right piece of dirt. I was ready to break through the police barrier. Only trouble was, somebody had beaten me to it. Betsy didn't like being caressed by my left hand. But under the circumstances, I had no choice. Next time, I'll knock. Conrad Baxter's last address was a cockroach castle where I had run into a doll whose perfume alone probably cost more than the building. Sorry. It's not my custom to pick on cripples, but uh, then again, most cripples are carrying a crutch. Not one of these. For a lady, you have a great way with a heater. Mm. We'll discuss my qualifications as a lady. After a little show and tell, first, your name. Hammer. Mike Hammer. Uh, uh, I'll do that. First, both hands behind your head. Yeah. Well, that could be you. If you don't believe me, I have identifying marks. <laughs> I'm sure you do. You have quite a reputation, Mr. Hammer. We'll discuss that later. What's your name? Audrey Rothmore. United Federal. Insurance? No. They pay the claim. My company recovers the property. Straight 10% of the value, plus expenses. So you can afford to bust through a police barrier. <laughs> well, I didn't see it stop you any. Oh, besides, there's really not much here anyway. Here. You can reload that if you want. Thank you. You know, the police got enough fingerprints here to fill up a file cabinet. Connie Baxter, his brothers, and their partner. The landlord says Baxter skipped out on the rent about a week ago. No, that's against the law. What's that? Inhaler, antihistamine, prescription. 
Our friend Baxter had an asthma problem. It's in his record. Yeah, let me see. Sorry. Show and tell time is over. You're very lucky, Mr. Hammer. Or else you're very good. Either way, United Federal will pay you $2,000 plus, say, 3% of our fee. Well, that's very generous, but I already have a client. $5,000. Believe me, Mr. Hammer, working with me does have its upside. I'm sure it does. But I only work with people I can trust. That's why I usually work alone. It was going on midnight, and the town was just coming alive with the promise of after-hours action. But for the moment, there was only one place I really wanted to be. I've seen men in battle, and I've seen men in the ring. None of them fought harder than the man in that bed. Hang in there, Philly. Hang in there, pal. You're gonna get better, you know that? You just got to. You got a lot of friends out there who, who really care about you. You can't let them down. Listen, now. Uh, I'm getting closer to the guy who did this. And I'm gonna nail him. But you can't give up until I do. Okay? Mr. Hammer, you have five minutes are up. We did find a cot for your secretary in the nurse's lounge, so if you'd like to stay, we thanks, can... Thanks, thanks. You're Mike Hammer, aren't you? Yes. I'm Vera Owens. Philly and I live in the same building. He's told me all about you. It's nice to meet you, Miss Owens. Bet you didn't know Philly had a girlfriend. That may be a little too strong. <sighs> Call me Vera, please. Vera. We're not exactly an item, but he's a great cribbage player. There aren't many of those around. No. Philly's going to make it. That's the way he is. He wouldn't want you doing anything foolish on his account. I know. Look after him, won't you, Vera? Sometimes, when you need it most, sleep just won't come. Then when it does, it comes with a vengeance. Drink your milk. Sweetheart, buy Philly a cookie. $600? Hey, come on, you're kidding. For $600, I could get two stones like this. Philly, call the police. Hey, look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! What are you doing, old man? It's just, uh... Not you! Not you! Okay, give me 20 minutes. I'll meet you at the light and easy. <laughs> Vitamins. Do I drink it or wash my hair with it? Come on, you're gonna love it. It's good for you. Question. What does Connie Baxter love more than guns and chicks? Ozzy, I'm not in the mood. Answer. Cause. Fast, beautiful cause. So I asked myself, what did he buy when he was flushed, when he made a big score? A convertible every time. Where'd you get this? 
DMV registration, but hold on. You haven't heard the best part. All of the cars that he bought were the same color, three of them. Two repossessed, but get this. All of them were wine-colored convertibles. V8 engines, milled Cleveland heads, uh, fuel injection, the works. And all of this is fed right into the dealer's computer. Okay, Ozzy, what's the point? A wine-colored convertible with his equipment was delivered to a dealer upstate last week, an hour's drive. So? The deposit was in the name Barney Samuels. Barney Samuel. Get it? Baxter's brothers. Where do I find the dealer? Yeah, here's the address. All I know is Baxter would die for that car. Yeah, maybe he will. Thanks. Ozzy was right. Connie Baxter had just bought a new set of wheels. And I was there to congratulate him. He put the stuff in the trunk. We don't have all day! Okay, okay. Baxter! I got one, but not the one I wanted. Conrad Baxter was still alive and crawling. I couldn't wait to flatten him like a dead lizard on the highway. If you had a lead on Baxter, you should have called this office. I did, but the line was busy. Damn it, I should have had him. Mike, you got one of them. No, don't be so easy on him. He moves into the neighborhood and turns up a stiff and no leads. Not quite. Connie Baxter laid out cash for the car. It means he's already been paid for the job. The diamonds are in the hands of the guy who set him up. Why do you think he's still hanging around the city? To put the squeeze on whoever hired him. Listen, if this guy's smart enough to move four million in stones, he's not gonna let Baxter get his hands in his pocket. Don't count on it. He may not even know where Baxter's hands are. Oh, are we speaking in riddles today? No, in my spare time, I read tea leaves. Now, if you're finished, I've got an appointment. Well, do me a favor, will you, and make yourself available. I've got a local sheriff, a police commissioner, and worse off, a car dealer on my back, thanks to you. I'm so sorry. I'll have Philly Brock send you a sympathy card. Mike, you're way off base with this. Ernie's moving mountains to try and get this guy. Yeah, oh, come on. He doesn't even know who Philly Brock is. Oh, we got to work together on this. Is that a lot to ask? What's bugging you? I had that creep Baxter in my sights, and I let him go. I blew it. That's what's bugging me. I'll see you later. You know, if I had a wall to kill, you'd be my first choice. What? You're a hard man to locate. Of course, I suppose I could just follow the sound of exploding glass. You look you came out of that alive. If you want to stay alive, you're going to need some extra clips. You can't load. I can if I have time. About a day and a half, maybe. This is a right-handed gun. Mm -hmm. the slide release is on the left. The safety's on the left. Right. Tell me something I don't know. I don't use a safety. Oh, I like that. Good shot. You see? Right-handed. Oh. On a weak side draw, left-handed. The ejection port throws the shells right back to your face. You blink, and it bucks. A compensator would handle all that, but you're never going to shoot any faster than a one arm paper hanger. Where'd you learn all about this? Faster? I was in the gun club. Really? Listen, Mike, lay off Baxter for a while, will you? Our office got a phone call today. We have the possibility of a deal. Baxter's already made his deal. 
He paid cash for the car, front money. So you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? No. But I do know that a case of nerves can really blow this opportunity for me. Just back off, will you, Mike? Give me some time. It's not mine to give. I've got a friend whose time is running out. Maybe this will buy you some. With this? It does the job. Keep it. I have a spare. Audrey Rothmore had asked me to back away from the case. Did she have a reason she wasn't telling me? There was something going on I didn't like. Or maybe it was just the full moon. Hold on, mate. It's me, Moretti. Johnny, you're lucky I can't draw this thing. Tell me, you're like a kerosene can. I don't like the light, OK? OK. Want some coffee? Oh, thanks. Keeps me awake. Johnny Baxter is not feeling too good about you killing his brother. Smart Money says he'll try to find you. Oh, yeah? I'll let him come. If he doesn't, I'll send him an invitation myself. Might not have to. connie has got himself into a girlfriend. Yeah? You got a name? Uh-uh. But those that see him together says she's classy. Great legs, you know, a real package. How long they been together? I don't know. A month, maybe two. But like the French say, say la guerre. Find a woman, right? Right. What else you got? Sorry, it's the best I can do. Reliable? Maybe. But it's just street talk. And you know what that's worth, Mike. Yeah. Mike. Yeah, Val. Mike is bad. Philly was doing real well. He even opened his eyes. He's not breathing very well. Mike, I'm afraid. You'd better come. Okay, I'm on my way. Philly? He's in trouble. He's gone, Mike. They lost him. Philly's gone. A man's alone when he's born and when he dies. In between, it's just a matter of luck. Philly's luck had run out, and from that day on, my life would be a little more alone. All right. I'll tell him. You OK? You know, they say you don't drink a toast until it's finished. As far as Philly is concerned, it's not finished. Then let's put it on hold. That was Audrey Rothmore. She'd like for you to come by her apartment this afternoon, 4 o'clock. She says she'll have the diamonds. I'm on my way. There were big questions I could never answer. Like, why does a man like Philly Brock have to die? But there were little questions, too. They had to be answered quickly. So on my way to Audrey's, I stopped by Pat Chambers' office. Pat wasn't in great shape, either. Everybody was having a difficult time. What the hell do you mean Barrett and said that I wasn't to be informed? I got a homicide on my hands. What, are you personally involved? You're damn right I'm personally involved. Philly Brock was a friend of mine. Hey, this department still calls the shots, not the special prosecutor. Hang on a second. Did you approve any deal? I didn't approve no deals. I want Baxter. I don't give a damn what Barrington said. You want me to explain it? Don't explain it. Quote me. You got it? Uh, what do you want, Mike? Probably the same as you. I'm due at Audrey Rothmore's in about 17 minutes. Trust that broad? I don't trust anybody who considers a bunch of rocks to be more important than Philly Brock. I'll tell you what, add Barrington to your list. He just took 10 men off the case. Doesn't surprise me. Well, Mike. Tell my kid I'm a cop, does it mean something? Linda knows the drill, but she knows that Philly was a friend of mine. They cut Baxter loose. What am I going to tell him? What am I going to tell myself? Well, you don't have to worry about it. It's 
Baxter's not going to be around that long, I guarantee you. Look, Pat, there's a woman involved in this. Baxter's girlfriend. I tried to find out about it through his parole officer, Lizetta Warren, but I came up against a stone wall. I think she knows something. Maybe you'll have better luck with her than I did. Well, I'll give her a call. Get anything else? Just this. If it wasn't for Philly, Baxter would have blown me away. I don't have to tell you what that means. Yeah, you better get to him before I do. Lousy anniversary, huh? <laughs> Audrey Rothmore lived on top of the world. From her place, the city was just a lot of colored lights and distant taxi horns. I could only guess how she could afford to live that way. And I didn't like what I was guessing. Excuse me, but I have to clear everyone. Oh, sure, no problem. Thanks. Hammer, what are you doing here? Looking for trouble. Well, don't cause any here, please. It's all right. Mr. Hammer's quite welcome. My God. We heard about your friend. I'm sorry. Thanks. These are all company people, people that help recover the stones. I wish you had the guy that took them. Well, we tried, but we were unlucky. And incidentally, Ms. Rothmore cooperated fully. I'm sure she did. The money was sent by messenger. I had four cars and ten men working in relays. The package was dropped in a phone booth. A blind drop and picked up by another messenger? Exactly. My men stayed with it through four exchanges, and then we lost them in the noon hour rush. I don't believe it. <laughs> believe it? It cost our company a bundle. Yeah, it cost Philly Brock his life. How did you make contact? No, I didn't. It was all done through the messengers. Look, it was a risk, but Mike, these things always are. And the insurance company's quite pleased with the deal we've made. Are you going to arrest her? Ms. Rothmore? Hmm. For what? Receiving stolen property. Listen, Hammer, I know you're upset over the death of Philly Brock, but I have no reason to arrest this lady. Where are the diamonds? They're here. Murchison is checking them against the manifest. Murchison, what do you have for us? It's all here. Everything's fine. Yeah, not everything. I'm sorry about Philly, Mike. I really am. I don't like this. Fact is, Ms. Rothmore saved my company. Insurance never replaces everything. You got that right. Uh, Ms. Warren. I'm surprised. I thought your caseload was breaking your back. I didn't think a little champagne would be harmful to my health. Not unless you drink it by the magnet. Mr. Hammer, I nearly gave Audrey the same information I gave to you. She seemed to think it helped with the investigation. Mm hmm Has anybody ever told you that you have great legs? What are you getting at? Connie Baxter had a girlfriend. Your legs fit the description perfectly. Just another form of rehabilitation from your friendly parole board, huh? I don't need to stand here and take this. Thanks. Would you hurry, sweetheart? I get a little too close to the truth. What do you want? I make a great cup of coffee. We're going to talk. If I scream, you'll have a hell of a time explaining to the police. Go ahead. While we're waiting for the sirens, maybe you can tell me a few things. Like, how does Audrey fit into all this? I have nothing to say to you. Then let me tell you about my friend, Philly Brock. He was one of the sweetest guys in the world, and now he's dead. You knew about the job that Baxter was going to pull, didn't you? Maybe you even lined it up for him. I don't know anything, except you're a suspicious bully. Baxter's probably on his way to Canada. No. I killed his brother. He won't leave the country until he settles a score. And when he's through with me, he'll come for you and your partner. <laughs> what? Whoever it was that asked you to hire somebody to pull an easy job for a price, my guess is you went to your boyfriend, Baxter. I didn't. Who's your partner? Whatever sickness had drawn Lizetta Warren to Baxter was healing over. And I was sure she really wanted to tell me what she knew. So I kept pressing until she did. Look, Lizetta. Greed is an infection. 
The promise of real money can get to just about anybody, even a parole officer. Right now, you're an accessory to armed robbery and murder. You wait too much longer, and you're not going to have a lot to bargain with. Well, say I give you a name, and you get Baxter. I'll talk to the special prosecutor. Maybe you can make a deal. I don't know. Think about it. say that Conrad Baxter's parole officer, Lizetta Warren, had gone somewhat beyond the call of duty. She had slept with him and then set him up with whoever was behind the jewelry heist. He paid her back with a bullet, only this time I wasn't going to let him get away. The chase went on and it had gotten dark, but Baxter didn't even try to lose me. He seemed to want me on his ground. That was okay. I wanted him too. Nice wheels, Baxter! <laughs> you missed your calling, though. You would have been a great pimp! your car you should have run no you messed it up i could add a million now come on <laughs> who was it lizetta hired you out to baxter <coughs> who was gonna pay you a million <coughs> don't tell me you don't know <coughs> i know i know Sound like you're in trouble, pal. <coughs> no 
dusty up here, isn't it? <coughs> Maybe you need this. Catch your breath while you're still breathing. Connie Baxter would never have trouble breathing again. I wasn't in the habit of picking up someone else's loose change. But on the other hand, it's not usually diamonds. The other guy, Baxter's dead. So's Lizetta Warren. She hired him to do the job. Maybe you can explain these to me. I think maybe I can. I think you better. You really don't trust me, do you? I'd like to. Give me a reason. Hello, Murchison. Emma, how'd you get up here? It's all right, John. It was I who supervised the installation of security, remember? Seems like your friend Connie Baxter held out on you. Baxter? I never saw the man except for the day he put a gun in my back. That's because you're such a brave man, John. You had Lizetta Warren set up the entire deal to hire Baxter. That way you wouldn't risk a thing. Lizetta, that's nonsense. Ask her. Unfortunately, we can't. She's dead. Baxter killed her. It's all over, John. That's right, Johnny. You know, you made one big mistake. You verified all the stones as recovered, but there were a couple missing and you knew it. The only reason you'd ignore two stones that size is because you wanted the investigation ended as soon as possible. Your other mistake, Baxter. He didn't count on the fact that he was even greedier than you are, that he'd want to keep the stones for himself. It's too bad. You just can't find good help nowadays, can you? Perhaps not. you are gun hammer. The stones. Tell me something. Why'd you do it? You're a very rich man. Explain it to him, Audrey. A few hundred thousand dollars in hard currency. That's millions in diamonds. Enough to kill for, huh? That wasn't the intention. Things got out of hand. You first, Hammer. You make a misstep, you take her with you. Simple accident.
going down. You do okay one-handed. Thanks. Two are always better than one. When a bad man dies, he can be replaced. There are plenty of others standing in line. When a good man goes, we all lose something. Philly Brock would be missed, but never forgotten. <laughs>